Skylin Rose asks, How do you deal with a friend who constantly lies for no reason? I hate people like that. I really do. Don't be friends with them. Drop the friend. Friends don't lie. Tell them, look, I'm ha I'm uncomfortable with you not telling the truth. You might decide if that friendship's worth it. They shouldn't be your friend if they're constantly lying. You should not have that type of toxic relationship in your life. If your friend has siblings or a sibling, all you gotta do is ask them. But if they lie, then just ask their parents. You should tell them, why are you lying? You should really tell the truth. You are my friend. Why are you keeping secrets? Say, hey, what's up? How come you're lying to me? I think it's stupid. Try to find proof that they're lying. So when you do confront them and they try to deny it, you have the proof. Tell them, like, why do you always have to lie? Make sure that you guys can both, like, deal with this problem in a way where it won't ruin your friendship. What I do is I call them out on it, and then they get to know me as the friend that's gonna call them out on their lies. Call her out every time. Every time she lies, she's like, yeah, my dad was on the moon. And be like, aha, liar. Sandra wants to know, is Tupac actually dead? What is Tupac? What is it? Toothpick? How am I supposed to know this? Tupac, is he one of that rapper guy? This is like the story that Hitler's still alive and all that. Even though I have no idea about it, I feel like I've heard that Tupac is actually dead. I'm sorry to say it, but Tupac is actually dead. I don't think he would go this long pretending to be dead if he really wasn't. I think he actually is dead. It's been a few years now, and uh, I think the brother's gone. He left us some great music, though. Only outside of Coachella. Tupac is actually Elvis. Tupac is dead. I think they still have a hologram of him. You can be shot and still stay alive. So I think he's still alive. I'm gonna say no because, I don't know, Illuminati. I am Poster asks, How can I prevent myself from getting distracted by social media when I need to do work? I cannot help you with this. I love Instagram. It's really simple. Turn it off. Shut off your phone. Say that work is fun. If you gotta work, then put social media on hold. Mind over matter. Set the computer aside, set your phone aside, put it on silent. I put my electronics away because I know this work is more important than getting on Facebook. You just have to have your priorities straight. I, like, put my phone on Do Not Disturb and put it, like, somewhere far away from me in my room. If it's on your phone, just, like, put your phone in another room or on airplane mode. That's what I do. I'm doing it right now. Set a reward system, so, like, for every goal that you accomplish in your work, you get a piece of candy. So you're like, ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. Mm, the phone can wait. Ooh, piece of candy. Claire Wong wants to know. I'm 23 years old now, and I really want to get a small tattoo, but my parents are very against tattoos. What should I do? Don't get a tattoo, because it doesn't come off. And your parents are right. Don't be stupid. No, you should not get a tattoo. Because you should listen to your parents and be a good girl. Your parents are in the old school way of thinking about this. Put it somewhere where it won't be seen. Try to convince them that it's something that is actually um, meaningful. Show them what kinds of tattoos you want. Maybe they'll understand like, oh, it's it actually is good. It actually has a meaning. Go out and get your tattoo and tell your parents and deal with what happens. Just get it anyway. I mean, does it really matter what your parents think? If you want to get this tattoo, it's your life. It's not being rude to them. You're showing respect because you're living your life. I always use this motto. Um, it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. So if it's already done, it's a tattoo, it's permanent, what are they gonna do, ground you? You're 23. I'm 18 and I have a tattoo and my parents were super against it, but they had me write it on my wrist every day for like two years to make sure that I didn't absolutely hate it. So I mean, there are little bargaining chips and like stuff you can do with your parental figures. This is a clever one, folks. Is a bib a mail out, oh one. How do you make a sequel better than the first movie? You don't, usually. Everybody knows that sequels are nothing near better than the first movie. Sequels have such a stigma about them, which is why the sequel has to be making fun of the fact of sequels, which is why 22 Jump Street was freaking awesome. This is really our question because most of them are terrible. Sort of stay true to the actual movie. You're gonna have to talk to the directors about that. Find a good director, find a good producer to the movie. I just think good writing is at the key. The first this movie should end in a cliffhanger, and then the sequel should follow through to that cliffhanger. I imagine you'd have to get the same people. Like, the second Mad Max, to me, was not as good as the first one, because the people were different. You should study the first movie very well, and then you want to get creative, and just add creative stuff to it. Add special effects, and make it more complex and robotical. That's very good. Fighting a little bit. A little bit of magic, a little bit this, a little bit that. Lots of explosions are good. If it's like 
Twilight, explosions. A notebook, explosions. When they kiss, there should have been just out of their mouth. Thanks for watching Advice on the React channel. Subscribe, new shows every week. Comment your questions down below. Bye. Bye. Remember, Instagram and thin homework.